Are these points evenly spread around the circle? This may seem like an obvious question. No. And that's true. They're not evenly spaced. The pink distance between the points is much larger than the yellow distance. But there is a sense in which these points are evenly spread. We'll say that these points are centered because the average point is the center of the circle. Um, and how do we verify this? How do we confirm that the average is the center? One way we could do that is to put the circle on a grid. Um, and we'll say the center is the origin. Now if we find the coordinate for each point, and then we average the x-coordinates, we get 0, and average the y-coordinates, we also get 0. So the average of these points does turn out to be the center of the circle, 0, 0. But this method is pretty tedious. There's got to be a better way. And there are some better ways to do that, one of which is to give each point a vector. And then if we stack these vectors together, we eventually arrive back at the center. So this gives us a more visual way to see that the average point is the center. But we're effectively doing the same thing. There is a method that's even better for seeing the average of these points. And for that, we'll ask the question, what is the smallest collection of points that is centered? One point is never centered, since a point is its own average, and a point on the circle is not at the center of a circle. But two opposite points are centered. They're on the opposite side, so they average to the middle. And if we take a step up from there, three points on an equilateral triangle are also centered. And we could do the same with four points on a square, five points on a regular pentagon, six points on a regular hexagon, and we can keep going on any regular polygon. So we'll call these regular collections of points, where the points are evenly spaced. Each of these is centered. And so, going back to our starting set of points on the left, here we have a blank slate on the right, and what we'll do is place a pentagon with a point at each corner. And then we'll add a heptagon with seven points, and then a two-gon, just two opposite points. And now we notice these three points form an equilateral triangle, so we can subtract that equilateral triangle by removing the points, and now if we clear things up by removing the lines, we see the collection on the right is the same as that on the left. We were able to build this collection of points using those regular collections. So we'll say that this is a buildable collection. And this gives us a nice way to think about it. Let's go back through the way we built it. So first we put a pentagon, and a pentagon is centered, so the average is the center of the circle. And then we added a heptagon, which is also centered. So we didn't change the average by adding it. And then the same with those two opposite points. Adding them didn't change the average. And a triangle is also centered, so subtracting it won't change the average. So we started with the center as the average, and each step along the way we didn't change that. So the result will also be centered. And we could do the same thing with any sequence of regular collections. So every buildable collection is centered. But what about the reverse? Is every centered collection buildable? If we have some points such that the average point is the middle, will we always be able to find a way to build that? This is not true. And here is a counterexample. Here's a collection of points that is centered but not buildable. So first, to see that this is centered, here are the coordinates. If we average the x, we get 0, and the y, we also get 0. So this is centered. Why is it not buildable? How do we know that that's impossible? Well, what is the difference between our starting collection on the left and this impossible one on the right? On the left, this is a rational collection of points. 
The distance between these two points is a fifth of the circumference. This is 4 35ths of the circumference. And this is 2 105ths of the circumference. The distance between any two points on this circle is a rational portion of their circumference. That's not true on the right. This collection is irrational. The distance between these two points is approximately 31% of the circumference, but it makes up an irrational portion. So why does this matter? Let's take a closer look. We'll call this collection I for irrational, and then we'll call this point P. And we'll define I sub P to be all of the points that are a rational distance from P. So this is some sub-collection of I. And we know that pink distance is irrational. So the white point on the right side is not in I sub P. And this distance is also irrational, and so is this one, and so is this one. So in fact, none of the other four points are in I sub P. But P is zero from itself, and zero is rational, so I sub P just contains P. And so the average of I sub P, the average point, is just P itself. And this is going to be important to remember. Now, let's assume that we have a build of I. We're assuming that it's buildable. For some step of this build, we'll have an n-gon. And the distance between any two points on the n-gon is rational. It's some k over n. So, if P is rational from at least one point, if there's some a over b, then it is rational from every point, because adding two rationals will result in a rational. And this means that each step of the build is either all rational or all irrational from P. In other words, each step is either entirely within I sub P or entirely outside of I sub P. So we can ignore the irrational steps, the ones that are outside of I sub P, and then we get a set of steps in I sub P. And so that implies that I sub P is buildable, which implies that I sub P is centered, which implies that the average of I sub P is the center of the circle. But we know the average of I sub P is P, and P is not the center of the circle, so we have a contradiction. Our assumption is false. We can't have a build of I. Okay, so not every centered collection is buildable. But we identified the problem. The problem was irrationality. So is every rational centered collection buildable? It turns out this is true. So we can show that we can use regular collections to build any rational centered collection. And we can actually do a little better than this. We can use just prime regular collections. And this is a pretty easy step to make. Uh, if we have a build that requires a 12 gone, 12 isn't prime, but we can get these points using four triangles, and three is prime. And one of the reasons I bring this up, these prime regular collections, is because we can use them directly to build cyclotomic collections, and we can then use those cyclotomic collections to build our rational centered collection. And so this is the method by which we can prove buildability of the rationals. And we'll start with the yellow arrow, going from cyclotomics to rational centered collections. So we'll do this looking at an example. Um, this, collect this collection will be made of a pentagon and then a negative triangle. They meet at a point, so the negative and positive cancel there, and then we're left with two negative points from the triangle. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is find a step size that hits all of the points. So here we have a triangle and a pentagon, which have three and five sides, so we can hit all of these points if we step a fifteenth of the circumference away around. So if we start here and then we take steps that are a fifteenth, we will eventually hit every point. So this distance was a 15th, but in general, we can take a step of 1 over m, where m is the least common multiple of the distance denominators. Okay, so we have that step size of a 15th, 
Now we want to think of these as being complex numbers. So the center of the circle is 0, and then the point on the right is 1, and we'll define z to be a fifteenth of the way around the circle. To be precise, this is what we're defining z as. And so these other points are negative z squared, z cubed, z to the 6, negative z to the 7, and z to the 9. So we can define a polynomial that kind of describes this collection, uh, c of x being this polynomial, so that the terms of c of z make up the collection. And because this is a centered collection, c of z equals 0. The reason we're using z is because z has a minimal polynomial, which is the 15th cyclotomic polynomial. It's the 15th because z was a 15th of the way around the circle. And this cyclotomic polynomial, phi sub 15, has a very nice division property. If there's some polynomial f such that f of z equals 0, then phi divides f. And if we recall, c of z was 0, which means that phi divides c. And if we compute this, we see that c divided by phi equals x plus 1. Or rewriting, c equals x plus 1 times phi. And so this x plus 1 kind of gives us a blueprint of how to construct c using phi. So taking phi sub 15 of z gives us some set of points. And then multiplying it by z rotates it a 15th of the way around the circle. And so if we add these two sets of points together, we should get z plus 1 times phi of z, which, according to the equation above, is c of z. Okay, now before we add these sets of points together, we should cancel. So here we have a positive and a negative point in the same location, so they'll cancel. And we have the same thing here, and the same thing here, and the same thing here. And so removing those points, we're left with these. And if we add them together, we get this set of points, which is in fact our original collection C, made of a pentagon and a negative triangle. So we made this construction here with a specific example, but for any rational centered collection with 1 over m as a step size, the mth cyclotomic polynomial, phi sub m, has the division property and can be used to build the collection. So that takes care of the right arrow, going from cyclotomic to rational centered. Now we're left with the left arrow, building the cyclotomics using the prime regular collections. And this is trickier. What we'd like to show is that for each natural number n, phi sub n can be built from regular collections. And we'll do this um, using induction on the number of prime factors of n. So starting off with zero prime factors, phi sub 1 of z is just two opposite points, and that is already a regular collection. If we look at one prime factor, uh, phi sub 2 is two opposite points, phi sub 3 is a triangle, phi sub 5 is a pentagon, phi sub 7 is a heptagon. Any phi sub p for a prime p is itself a regular collection. So we've shown that this holds for 0 and 1 prime factors, which gives us a basis for the induction, but we'll also show two prime factors uh, since this will come in handy later. So for an example, we'll look at phi sub 15, which is 3 times 5. Um, so as we saw before, these are the points of phi sub 15, and we can write phi sub 15 in this form. So we have phi sub 3, which is a triangle, but we need to increase the input power to a 5 um, to account for there being more points around the circle. And then this z cubed plus 1 is a blueprint for how to arrange the triangles. So the plus 1 gives us a triangle here, and then z cubed tells us to rotate by 3 15ths of the circumference and place another one. 
And then we have phi sub 5, which is a pentagon. And again, we've, uh, we've adjusted the power of the input to account for more points around the circle. And then the negative z tells us to put a negative pentagon 1 15th away around the circle. And so this form of the polynomial has described a way to build it using regular collections. And we can always do this in general for any primes p and q. Um, and this uses the same format. We have some polynomials f sub 1 and f sub 2 that give us blueprints, and then phi sub p and phi sub q are the regular collections. So now we have our starting point. We will assume that k prime factors is buildable. And we want to show that this implies that k plus 1 factors is also buildable. So we'll let the number n uh, have k prime factors, which are p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub 3, p sub 4, all the way up to p sub k. n has k prime factors, so we're assuming that it's buildable, which means we can write phi sub n using this form. It's similar to what we just saw with two prime factors. Um, we're summing over k prime factors, and for each we have a polynomial f, that is our blueprint for how to build, and then phi, which is our regular collection. So now we'll introduce a new prime, p sub k plus 1. And there's two options for this prime. First, scenario 1, p sub k plus 1 is a divisor of n. Using a fact about cyclotomic polynomials, we can write this equivalence. What we'd like to do is show that the left side is buildable. On the right side, we know that phi sub n is buildable from our assumption, so we can rewrite this. We just have to account for the input having a higher power. So we'll rewrite this in this form. Notice we've put the blue p sub k plus 1 in those powers. Now. To clean things up a bit, we'll redefine f sub i of x to be f sub i of x to the p sub k plus 1. So we can shorten that bit. And then we'll define f sub k plus 1 of x to be 0. And that means that we can increase the sum range to k plus 1. We're not adding anything because that term will just be multiplied by 0. Now just to make things clearer, we'll define m to be n times p sub k plus 1, and so we'll replace those with m. And now this is what we were looking for. Uh, phi sub m has a form that is buildable, and m has k plus 1 prime factors. So this takes care of scenario 1. Now let's move to scenario 2, where our new prime is not a divisor of n. This is considerably trickier. Uh, we'll use a different fact of cyclotomic polynomials to have this equivalence. It's similar to what we saw before, but we have this denominator of phi sub n of x. And this is a problem. We have to find some way to get rid of this denominator. Again, on the top, we will replace phi sub n with that form we saw before, accounting for the increased power with the blue new prime. And now we have a sum of these from 1 to k, but let's just look at one of them. So here we have the sum term for just p sub 1. Now pulling out another handy dandy fact about cyclotomic polynomials, there exists some polynomial g such that the equation below is true. Now we'll multiply on top and bottom by g and x to the n over p sub 1 minus 1. And now we see the denominator is equivalent to the left side of the below equation, so we can replace it with the right side. OK. Now we'll clean up a bit. We'll define some polynomial h sub 1. And essentially what we're doing here is just combining these two. We don't really care what they are. It's enough to know that it exists, so we'll just combine them together into some h. And now we'll perform a change of variables. So we'll define u to be x to the n over p sub 1. We will leave h alone, since it doesn't matter, but everywhere else we will replace x with u. And then we'll pull out another fun fact, uh, which lets us replace these two terms with just phi sub p sub 1 in the denominator. 
And then again, we can combine these two terms into phi sub p sub 1 times p sub k plus 1. And now we notice this is a cyclotomic polynomial with two prime factors. And as we saw before, this is why this was so important. If we have a cyclotomic with two prime factors, we can split it up into a form like this. So going back to the term of the sum, we will split that cyclotomic into a similar form. Now we'll distribute h, and then we don't really care about h or f, so we'll combine these two into f sub 1 of x, and we'll combine the other two into g sub 1 of x. Okay, uh, now let's tidy that up a bit. Now the final thing we'll do here is change variables back from u into x. So if we replace those, this is what we get. And so now, after all of those steps, we see this is another way to write the sum term, but we've completely eliminated the nasty denominator. So we've done this with p sub 1, but we can do it with every p, and so we can place it back into the sum. Now we've just got a couple steps to go. Just like before, we'll define m to be n times our new prime. And so we'll replace that everywhere. And then we'll distribute the sum over the two sections. And we notice here, this is not affected by the sum. There's no i anywhere here. So we can just define this section, the sum of all of the g's, uh, to be f sub k plus 1. We're just renaming it. And now this chunk has the same form as all of the other elements from the sum. It's just using k plus 1. So we can put it into the sum by increasing the sum to go to k plus 1. And then we don't need that anymore. And this is what we were looking for. This form shows that phi sub m is buildable and m has k plus 1 prime factors. So here we are finished. We have shown that left side. Yes, we can use prime regular collections to build these cyclotomic collections which means that every rational centered collection is buildable. So rational means buildable and irrational means non-buildable. Right? This isn't exactly true. So let's build a collection using a triangle and then we'll add a second triangle where this distance is 1 over root 2 of the circumference. Now, we just built this collection, so it's clearly buildable, but that distance is irrational, so it's also irrational. So it is possible to have a buildable but irrational collection. So when does that happen? Why does this one work? This one works because we can split it. It is made of two separate collections, and both of these are rational and centered. So, given some centered collection C, um, points being a rational distance is an equivalence relation, so we can partition the points into subcollections that are rational. If every subcollection in the partition is centered, then C is buildable. Because each of these subcollections are rational and centered, we can build them all separately and then add them all together to make C. But if at least one subcollection is not centered, C is not buildable. And we can show this using the same argument before from the irrational collection I. And speaking of I, I will leave you with something to think about. If you recall, I is centered but not buildable. Um, and it has five points, but is it the smallest? Or is there a centered but non-buildable collection with fewer than five points?